In this video, I'm gonna show you everything that I am bringing on an upcoming snowy winter backpacking trip. I have some backpacking gear that you've probably seen me use in many videos, but I also have some new ultralight backpacking gear specifically for the winter, and then some stuff that I've actually made for a snowy backpacking trip. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through everything around me and how I am packing and preparing for a winter overnight in the snow. Everything here is going with me on my backpacking trip, except for the cat. This is my show, gosh darn. I actually am not normally a winter backpacker. I tend to be kind of a fair weather backpacker, but this year I got really psyched on doing some snowy winter backpacking. There's some stuff that's that's not fun about winter backpacking, but there's also some stuff that's fun about it. I mean, look, I have a sled. What's not fun about a sled, right? No one takes sleds to not have fun. Ooh. First things first, let's talk about this rainbow backpack. Ta-da! This is a brand new backpack for me. This is a custom ultralight pack from a company called Light AF. Very exciting. This bag is a 46 liter bag, but it actually has almost 60 liters of capacity when you factor in the side pockets and this massive front pocket too. This bag can also comfortably carry about 35 pounds of weight. I got mine with this buckle strap, two massive water bottle pockets, and then I have two mesh stretchy pockets on the side, two pockets on the shoulder straps. This bag doesn't have any hip belt pockets, which is why I will be carrying my fanny pack. It matches too, which is cool. Groundbreaking. Everything that I have around me is going to get loaded into my new pack, pretty similarly to how I pack my bag for summer backpacking, except for a couple of heavier items, which will get loaded onto my homemade Polk sled. I am super excited about my Polk sled, and I will talk about this a little bit later and give you a demonstration. But first, let me talk about my layers. <clears throat> oh, damn it. So in addition to my layers that I will be wearing while I am hiking, I am also packing a lot of extra stuff. So I have here an extra long sleeve wool base layer for sleeping. And then I have some fleece lined pants. But one of the most important things for winter is having warm, dry clothes to change into at night because that is when you kind of run the biggest risk of hypothermia. If you just like sweat into all of your layers and then go to sleep in those, all that sweat and that moisture just stays sitting next to your skin. So having extra layers and clothing to sleep in is crucial. I am also packing a lightweight micro grid hat, some sleep socks, spare underwear, and then my net gaiter. Ta-da! This might not be the most fashionable piece of clothing, but when the temperatures get really, really cold, it's amazing. Plus, I like this part. That actually brings me nicely to what I'm currently wearing on the top. Sam Bob makes custom micro grid hoodies. So I actually picked out the colors and I decided I wanted to go for like elementary school. I had this like idea in my mind of like a little kid playing on the blacktop, riding around a, a big wheel bike. And I wanted to look like that. Anyway, it's a little bit on the bigger side. So I have lots of room to layer underneath it. On top of this hoodie, when I'm hiking, I'm also gonna be wearing my insulated Patagonia Nano Puff vest and my Apex Torrid jacket from Enlightened Equipment. Cute. I've had a few people ask me about bringing underwear on your backpacking trips. If you're backpacking in the winter, I would recommend going for either really high-waisted underwear that comes up over top of your base layer bottoms or a thong. If you have like really bulky underwear layered with your base layer bottoms, it can be uncomfortable. Be bold, start cold. Be. Be. Strong. Wear a thong. Yeah! <laughs> For hiking in the winter, I will wear a wool base layer bottom and then a pair of hiking pants on top of that. I opt for hiking pants that are on the bigger side because I need that extra room when I'm wearing like a heavy base layer underneath. Woo! So last outer layer is my rain jacket. This is not a Gore-Tex rain jacket. It's just a super simple waterproof layer, super light and easy to pack. So that pretty much covers my clothing. But let me also talk about the things that I'm using to keep my hands and my toesies warm. So I recently picked up a pair of heated glove liners. I have Raynos, which essentially means that my fingers go totally numb and white if they get cold. It goes on like this, obviously. And then there's a little button on the back that has three different heat settings. One of the downsides of this is definitely that you have this big battery pack at your wrist, but they're just so useful and so warm. And I have found that they keep my hands very, very toasty, even when I am in temperatures that are like below negative 10 Fahrenheit. Now, in addition to these liners, I also have a pair of like waterproof mittens I can put on over top of these. But the ones that I'm mostly gonna be wearing are actually these ones that covers my whole hand and has a little spot where I can get my fingers out. They're basically like a convertible. 
This allows me to have something that keeps the heat that is created by the heated liner from escaping quickly. So I have here a pair of wool socks. These are from Darn Tough. And then these things, which are the Hot Saki Neoprene Toe Covers. These things are awesome. They do an amazing job of trapping in the heat. Slide this on, boom, like that and then put it into my shoe. If you are using those little stick-on toe warmers, you can actually put those between your socks and your hot socky just by sticking them on the top of your toes and then sliding these on over top of those toe warmers. But I have actually found that combining my warm wool socks with hot sockies and my insulated snow boots, that's actually been plenty warm for me, even in really extremely low temperatures. These are the seven inch Oboes Bridgers. There's, wait, seven or nine? Measure them. About nine inches. All right, 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 great. These are the nine inch Obo Bridgers. They also come in a shorter seven inch height. And these are far and away the warmest winter hiking boots I have ever owned. The Obo's Bridger insulated have 400 grams of insulation in them. One thing to note with winter hiking boots is that you want them to be a little bit looser in the toe box. And that's not just because you're gonna be like putting on a heavier sock or even wearing hot sockies like I do. It's also because you need a little bit of extra space in there for your foot to warm. And if you have a little bit of extra room in the toe there, then you have essentially like an extra layer of heat. Whereas if you're pressing against the outside edges of the boot, you're gonna get a lot colder. They are on the more expensive side, but if you are looking to invest in a pair of boots and really get into snowshoeing and winter backpacking like I am, then I would definitely recommend these. Okie dokie. Oof, that's better. I'm gonna quickly talk about some of this smaller stuff and then I will move on to my sleep system, my tent, and my pulk sled. Great. First I have my toiletries. This little tiny toiletries bag is the same bag that I use for all of my backpacking trips. We also have my pee kit. So this is my pee style. The pee style is particularly handy for winter backpacking because I'm often trying to like scoop base layers out of the way. So if I can just stay standing and not get my butt close to snow, that's fantastic. Plus there's something incredibly satisfying about using a pee style, standing to pee and watching your pee like burn a hole deep into the snow. Have you just discovered this? Listen, when you're squatting to pee, you're like this, you're like, so if you like want to watch your pee burn a hole, you're like, whereas if you're standing, you're like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so that's my pee style. And then of course I have my Kula cloth and these two things just get strapped to the outside of my bag. Next, I also have my first aid kit. This first aid kit has all of the normal stuff in it, but it is a little bit more geared towards winter. So I actually have spare hand warmers in here and a few other medications that I tend to only need when it gets really cold. Cool, first aid kit. I'm just chucking everything off screen into a chair. If you're wondering where everything's going, it's not like going into oblivion. Ah! On the topic of first aid, I also have a couple of these little hand warmer things. I'm kind of on the fence about these. So these are called hot snaps. They're full of a gel and then a little metal disc. And when you pop this little metal disc, that activates a chemical reaction that makes this gel get warm. Pop it, see? The texture went from being like a gel to more of like a sand, and this is putting off a lot of heat. One of these only produces heat for around 20 to 40 minutes, which is way less time than the little tear open disposable ones. Those produce heat for closer to like six hours. These are reusable. So you can boil them in water for around 10 minutes and they will actually go back to that gel form and then they can be reused as many times as you want. And that I love. We got hot sockies, we got hot snaps. What's next? The hike that I'm doing is a snowshoe, but in addition to my snowshoes, I am also packing my ice trekkers. I think if you are ever going snowshoeing, it is a good idea to have a traction device like this because if you come across an area where it's actually easier to navigate navigate without snowshoes on, but it's still icy, you're gonna want traction devices. Owie. I also have here my poop tube and some wag bags. I made this in my DIY backpacking gear video. This is basically just a plastic container that is full of a couple of plastic trash bags with kitty litter in them. The ground will likely be too frozen to dig a cat hole and bury my poop, so I am gonna have to carry it out. I am also packing my trowel just in case, but most likely I'll be packing out my turds. In here. Do you think turd is a bad word? It's the bad word, turd bird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm actually like kind of hoping that the ground is so frozen that I can't bury my poop and I have to carry it out. So that'd be exciting. You might be the only person in the world who's excited about carrying around their own poop. <laughs> I'm not excited to carry around my own poop, but I'm excited to use this and to be able to like tell people about it. 
It's still weird. Okie dokie, Arto Choki. I have here my Nemo Chipper Sit Pad because I really need something that will insulate my butt from the ground. I'm sitting down and then I'm also bringing my Gossamer Gear Thin Light. This doesn't add any additional insulation or R value to my sleep system. This is really just there for comfort so that I have something that I can put down next to my sleeping pad and like be able to kind of sit on that when I'm cleaning up my tent. So I actually have three different games here. I'm not gonna bring all three of them. I just haven't decided yet which one I want to bring. I have our crowd favorite, Cosmic Wimp Out. I also have this game, which is called Four Points for Points. I've only played it one time before and it was kind of fun, but uh, the thing is it weighs practically nothing. And I have this brand new game that I got called Tinder Blocks. This is basically like reverse Jenga, but you're building a little campfire. I'm pretty sure this is like reverse Jenga, but you're building a little campfire is a nonsensical <laughs> sentence. That sounds like Mad Libs. What are you talking about? And you have to use the tweezers to stack the blocks. Uh, and then you stack the blocks on top of each other. Cool. And I have the hardest time just like sitting in my tent and if I'm cold and I get bored and it's wet and dark outside, at least having a game to play is really nice. So stove wise, I'm actually bringing my jet boil with me. It boils water very, very quickly and it keeps stuff hot for a long time. Because I'm spending the night out in the snow, I will actually be boiling all of my water by melting snow first. So having a stove that heats up really quickly and boils water really quickly is crucial, not just for cooking, but also for having drinking water. You may have noticed that I don't have a water filter here. There is no running water source where I'm going. So anytime I wanna drink water, I will have to melt snow and then bring that melted water to a boil to drink water. And I'm also packing a couple of iodine tabs as an emergency water purification, just in case of any issues with melting the snow. Quick pause. One of the things that I love about my jet boil is that it keeps beverages hot for such a long time because of this koozie. And I love to have something hot to drink at night when I am camping. In my case, I am drinking Dream Powder. If you haven't heard of Dream Powder before, this is a high quality sleep aid that helps you through every stage of your sleep cycle. I am a bad sleeper. And in my case, that often stems from anxiety, which is often made worse when I'm in uncomfortable situations, such as sleeping in the snow. So for my upcoming trip, I have packed two servings of my Dream Powder in this little container. And at night, I can add a scoop into my hot water boiled in my jet boil, put on the lid, and now I have something delicious that I can sip on to help me sleep. If you struggle with sleep at home or at camp and you want a delicious nighttime hot chocolate to help you sleep and wake up feeling refreshed, then definitely check out Dream Powder. You can actually use the link in the description below or scan the QR code on my screen to get up to 35% off on your order of Dream Powder. I would not be recommending this to you all if I didn't authentically use it almost every single night. Oh, it tastes so good. Mm, cozy. Okay. Back to the video. I'm not gonna go through all the food that I've packed into this bear canister. This is actually food for me and for Rainer. And we opted to share a bear canister and actually load this onto the pulk sled rather than putting it in either of our packs. Opening a bear canister when it's really cold outside like this one is an absolute pain in the patootie. It hurts your hands a lot, but there is a trick. Just give me your credit card. Here is Rainer's credit card. There's the number, just kidding. We are going to take this credit card. We're fitting it between the tab that is on the bear canister right there and the lid. So if I leave that card where it is, now I can actually just open the bear canister normal. Ta-da. Bears ever get credit cards, we're all screwed. We're all screwed. I'm also bringing one of my little insulated food bags that I made out of Reflectix, and I can put any of my rehydrating backpacking meals into this Velcro pouch so that they stay warm while they rehydrate. And if you wanna know how to make this insulated food bag, I actually did an entire video on DIY backpacking gear that includes this little thing. Speaking of insulated stuff, let me show you my water. So on this trip, I am planning on bringing one one and a half liter Nalgene and one standard one liter Nalgene. This is a insulated pouch that I made for my Nalgenes. I basically just cut a piece of Reflectix that fit around my Nalgene, it was the right height. I used hot glue to glue it, and then I shoved a piece into the bottom. Nalgenes are fantastic, in my opinion, for cold weather backpacking because the wide mouth freezes way slower than like narrow mouth bottles, and they're much better than reservoirs where you have a whole tube that could freeze. If you are using a Nalgene and you don't have a little insulated koozie like this, just make sure that you store it in your pack upside down because water will actually freeze from the top down. So if your bottle is upside down like this, then the water that is on the bottom of your bottle will freeze. So when you turn it right side up, 
you still have drinkable water on the top. Really quick, I have a little fanny pack here. This is the Light AF fanny pack. And basically all I put in here is the stuff that I would normally keep in my hip belt pockets. Sunglasses, chapstick, snacks, my headlamp. I have my watch, which will be on my wrist. And I have my satellite messenger. I also have a little thermometer. Oh. We are down to my tent and my sleep system. Let me start with my tent. This is the Durston X-Mid 2 tent. I got this tent at the end of last year and I only had a chance to take it out on one backpacking trip. There are winter specific or mountaineering specific tents. This is not one of them. So I'm not expecting it to work in the same way that a tent like that would. But I do think that this is an awesome opportunity to test this out in colder weather. Let's move on to my sleep system. This is stuff that's almost entirely brand new. Unfortunately, that means I have to move the cat. No, that's, we can't do that. Come on, Papa. What a drama queen. <laughs> this is the Nemo Sonic sleeping bag. Oscar, bud, you can't be just here. Okay, bud, you gotta go. The Nemo Sonic is a zero degree sleeping bag, which means that it's kind of limit temperature is zero degrees Fahrenheit, but it can actually keep you safe down to negative 33 Fahrenheit. It's comfort rating, which is the rating that I am most interested in, is in the teens. It has this really big poofy draft collar. This actually can be Velcroed around your neck. So you can have something that like fills in all of the gaps around your neck. This also has these thermo gills on it. These unzip and allow for heat to escape. So if you are sleeping really warm, you just need like a little bit more ventilation, you can unzip these thermo gills and then get a little bit more air. I am really excited to use this on my upcoming trip and I will let you know what I think. The Sonic. I'm also bringing my Nemo Philo Elite pillow. As you all know, I love this pillow. Cozy friend, can't leave home without it. Snuggle. I also have a brand new sleeping pad. This is the Nemo Tensor Extreme. The Tensor Extreme is the lightest winter sleeping pad on the market. This is an R value of 8.5, which means it's super, super warm. Now let's get on to this stuff. <laughs> So first up, I have this lifeline shovel. I am bringing this along with me so that I can dig out a campsite if I need to or pack down snow. The handle actually extends, boom. It's not the lightest shovel out there, but it's pretty inexpensive and it should work really well for my trip. These are the TSL Symbios Instinct snowshoes. These snowshoes have a boa tightener on them and this makes it super easy to operate them one-handed. One of the things I hate most about snowshoes is when you have mittens on, you're cold and you're trying to like strap those rubbery straps down. But with this, you can just step your foot into it and then tighten it with the little dial. It also has a heel bar and that makes it a lot easier to go uphill because your snowshoes can be on the angle and your foot can basically be flat. Isn't that cool? I would recommend having trekking poles for snowshoeing because snowshoes are basically just really big clown shoes. You can get off balance pretty easily. Now let's talk about the sled. So this is my homemade pulk sled. It cost me $26 to get all of the stuff that you see here. I just have a basic blue sled and then two pieces of PVC pipe, one single piece of paracord. So what I've done with my paracord is thread it from one end of my PVC pipe all the way through, threaded it through the loops at the front of my sled, and then had it go all the way through the other piece of PVC pipe to the other end. On those ends, I have connected a washer and an S-beaner. I wanted to be able to unhook the S-beaner if I needed to and not have the paracord like shoot back through the PVC pipe. I have some rubber hosing down here. One of the DIYs that I looked at recommended this because it helps protect the paracord from like rubbing against the PVC pipe. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I think it's gonna work. The last thing I wanna do is pack all of my gear up and show you what that looks like, including what I'm gonna have on my pulk sled when I'm towing it behind me. Like a, like a sled dog, like a reindeer. That's enough talking, let's go play. So I have brought my homemade pulk sled to an alley behind my house to test it out. It definitely works. 
I can already tell there's some adjustments I'll wanna make, probably tighten up the cord a little bit, but so far, pretty good. So here I have this blue tarp. Underneath this tarp is my pulk sled. And then on the sled, I have my Gossamer gear pad on the very bottom here. I have my bear canister at the back of the sled, my Durston tent, and then this Nemo duffel bag. This is actually a new product from Nemo. It is a highly water resistant duffel bag. And I'll probably put things like extra fuel or even blankets, just sort of additional things that I need to stay comfortable camping in the snow. That's all gonna go in this duffel bag. Right now, this light AF pack weighs only about 18 pounds, which is super, super light. And that's largely because I have my heaviest stuff, like my food or even my shelter, on the sled. So it's pretty, pretty nice to actually be able to drag the heavy stuff behind me in the sled. So I have the two pieces of PVC pipe with my s beaners and all I'm doing is taking this s beaner and connecting it to the daisy chain on my hip belt. And we go for it. Okay, so I have all of my gear packed up. I have tested out my homemade pulk sled. The only thing left to do is actually go snow camping. If you wanna see the video of that adventure, make sure you stay tuned to my channel. And if you're not already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification bell and I will see you outside. Bye. Put and we're off. Is he in the shot? <laughs> Is he? <laughs> Thank you for showing me your butthole. Oh, yep, there we, okay. Oh, there it is. <laughs>